Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Crusting Air Podcast, Tuesday Rant, episode 212. That's right. This week's topics will be Royal Canadian Navy Sailor Defense, Maps, and Carbon Tax Part Two. That's right. More money coming out of our pockets into the federal government. Listener discretion and viewer discretion is advised because I like to swear and smoke cigarettes. So please stick around. See you in a bit. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada. This is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, episode 212 of the Crusty Up Podcast, my weekly Tuesday rant. I am your host, Krusty Canuck, and welcome to this episode. Yeah, I would have had, uh, had a different topic on uh, tonight uh, in regards to what was happening uh, in uh, Ukraine and all that, but I came across the story about four hours ago, and it's interesting uh, what's been going on. Let's just say it's uh, kind of angered me and enraged me because it, it's, it involves a member of the Canadian Forces. Uh, To my American listeners and British listeners out there, uh, we have a Navy, we have an Air Force, we have an Army, and uh, basically our military received its its royal uh, connotations again uh, a few years back. Uh, We have a Navy, so we call it the Royal Canadian Navy. Anyhow, I came across a story from Tamara Ugolini from Rebel News, and what she come across, and uh, I'm trying to say this without getting angry, ladies and gentlemen, because it's, it's kind of disgusting. So I'll say something positive before I present to you this story that uh, Rebel uh, came across. If you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe. Share this podcast all around your social media platform. And uh, if you feel like donating, please donate if you can. The links will be in the description for you too. And I'll leave links to this story in my description so you guys can follow along at a later time if you decide or share it with your friends, all that good stuff. And if you like uh, the podcast, please consider Joining my podcast on Podbean, Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, Grow Radio UK, and Player FM2. I'm trying to get on my Deezer as well. I, I download uh, Deezer from some of my music and when I'm taking long trips and when I'm working and what have you. So I'm going to try to put my podcast on Deezer as well. So look for Krusty Canuck on Deezer too. Anyway, carrying on with this episode 212 of the Tuesday Rant. A Royal Canadian Navy sailor defends maps and carbon tax part two. Now, maps... For those people who don't know what MAPS is, it's basically a polite way of saying you're a pedophile. Minor attracted persons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video from uh, Miss Ugolini from Rebel News. Uh, Hats off to those individuals there. Round of applause. Rebel Media and independent media outlets alike. And when I heard this uh, this afternoon, I was... Wow. Just, Just the buffoonery and the idiocy that goes into some of these people talking about this topic. Now, right now, I really don't give a a shit about the censors or the shadow banning, what have you. This is my opinion towards pedophiles. You know what I mean? And I don't care if you're male or female or if you identify as whatever. Leave kids alone. That simple. Okay. And what angers me the most about this story is that this individual is a master seaman, meaning that she has some rank. She's been in more than four to five years, has some authority, has people working under her, and she is promoting this garbage. This video is about seven minutes long. So what I'll do is I'll stop and start in between and uh, I'll let you guys, uh, (laughs) I'll let you guys decide there. Um, I'm not happy with this individual. So um, you, my wonderful audience, please, uh, at your own uh, discretion, uh, you decide exactly uh, what we should do with this individual. So just bear with me here, folks. Let's get you up the uh, sound here. Members are supposed to be the most upstanding citizens, the ultimate country servers and protectors, which is why you will (coughs) never believe what this supposedly esteemed naval member had to say about pedophilia. 
Tamara Ugolini here with Rebel News to bring you a now-deleted post by a Canadian Navy member who goes by the name of Navy Jessica on social media. Many of you have been sounding the alarm on the increasingly fetishized and sexual deviancy seen in pride celebrations from the never-ending alphabet of inclusivity to forcing the whole of society to engage in and validate gender dysphoria as some sort of virtuous identity fact instead of the theorized ideologue that it is. Many have been saying that all of this is a slippery slope to an all-encompassing obsession with deviancy, paving the way for validated pedophilia under the term MAPS, that is, minor attracted person. And apparently, Canada's very own naval member, Jessica, wanted to chime in on the pride festivities seen throughout the month of June, including obscure perversion, and posted the following comments on her social media. Pride is for everyone, and every sexuality is valid, and every experience is valid. MAP rights are human rights, and MAP is a legit... Okay, now you look at this. Pride is for everyone, and every sexuality is valid, and every experience is valid. MAP rights are human rights, and MAP is a legitimate part of the queer community and culture. So basically, you're, you're saying that uh, it's acceptable in, in the culture. Okay, Master Seaman. Is it acceptable to, to harm a child? Is it acceptable to coach and convince and manipulate a situation in the name of identity? Fuck and sickos. Legitimate part of the queer community and culture. At least one commenter pushed back on this disgusting comment by saying, no, minors cannot consent. Those who are older have significant power over minors. It is not a consensual or equal relationship. But Navy Jessica responds further, reinforcing her position as valid. The UN 8 March Principles for Human Rights states, sexual conduct. Okay, firstly, uh, what the hell does the UN got to do with it there, Master Seaman? You don't work for the UN, you work for Canada. Okay? Holy shit. Duct involving persons below the domestically prescribed minimum age of consent to sex may be consensual in fact, if not in law. The Geneva-based International Commission of Juris wrote in March with an assist from UNAIDS and the Office of the United Nations Commissioner for Human Rights. This particular statement received a lot of backlash on social media, with some saying that the UN was essentially calling for the decriminalization of sex between minors and adults, prompting the UN to issue clarification where they state, in the application of law, it is recognized that criminal sanctions are not appropriate against adolescents of similar ages for consensual, non-exploitative sexual activity. The UN is resolute in fighting the sexual exploitation of children, upholds that sexual exploitation and abuse of children is a crime, and supports countries to protect children. So even Jessica misrepresented what they were saying as some sort of confirmation that this disgusting perversion is somehow legitimate. She says people can't choose who they are attracted to. And if the adult approaches the child and the child says yes, then they are both consenting. Other commenters push back. Asking Silva, and this is unimaginable, so I'm sorry in advance, but asking her if she would have sex with a 10-year-old and if they said yes. And another telling her about a little thing called self-control while reminding everyone about the textbook definition of pedophile. Jessica responds with a book that she has read, A Long Dark Shadow by Alan Walker. It teaches you that it's not about self-control. People don't choose to be attracted to minors, and it explains why pedophile is a derogatory term. A Long Dark Shadow, Minor Attracted People and Their Pursuit of Dignity, was written by a now-resigned university professor who claims that this work has been mischaracterized partly on the basis of their trans identity. It would appear that the book attempts to destigmatize pedophilia by prioritizing the feelings of deviant, disturbed, perverted adults over the protection of innocent children. Lo and behold, some of the comments of this book review on goodreads.com says this is part of an ongoing agenda to normalize pedophilia. Now we were able to link the identity of Navy Jessica back to this person, MS. Okay, there she is, ladies and gentlemen. 
Master Seaman Jessica Silva, shipboard air controller, SAC, HMCS Vancouver, has achieved a feat very few have, reaching her 1,000th hour as a SAC on 22 July during RIMPAC 2022. So last year when our Navy was actually mobile. Master Seaman Silva is the only second sailor on the West Coast to reach this huge number and the first sonar op SAC to do so. Well, well done. Well done, Master Seaman. Now, I'm not Navy, okay? I'm, I'm ex-infantry. And if I had a master seaman or a master corporal under my command, and I found out you're peddling that shit, bye-bye. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to say anything terrible, derogatory, but uh, it's not going to work out to your favor. I, I would guarantee it. Anyway, I, I digress. We'll carry on here. That stands for Master Seaman Jessica Silva. It says that shipborne air controllers are responsible for tactical air control of helicopters, international aircraft, and fixed wing marine craft. The job and title is a recognized NATO qualification granted to naval operators. <coughs> Jessica Silva's LinkedIn has since been removed. How convenient. Since we know that soldiers could not partake in any freedom-oriented initiatives throughout the COVID hysteria, whether it be speaking out against the government-sanctioned COVID-19 vaccine mandates or advocating against knee-jerk public health restrictions without facing chain-of-command repercussions. So even when you see that too, how uh, the military is also cut a lot of soldiers and there's also a lawsuit going on uh, now too there's about 300 plus soldiers that are going to be suing the military um in um what the hell is it called it's not a, a class action lawsuit it's another legal term but basically uh, wrongful dismissals and human rights violations and i'm talking real human rights violations not just being screamed at and having their feelings hurt i'm talking about um being forced to do something against your will an unlawful command and i'll probably pull an update on that there next week for you as if i can but uh, I, I think you see what I mean, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to the priorities of our leadership in this country and who they're appointing in key positions. It doesn't matter if you're a sonar or a SAC or a radio operator or an infantry or some kind of pilot. You have any authority, any kind of command, and you're peddling that shit, and yet you'll release 300 soldiers because they won't get that jibby jab. Priorities, right? Priorities. Rebel News wanted to reach out to the media contact at the Navy to see if this member conduct was okay. We asked, does the Navy have a policy pertaining to pedophilia and member conduct? If so, how does the military address active military members that promote or otherwise engage in pedophilic normalization? Media relations responded with the following, harmful and inappropriate conduct, be it through words or actions, is completely incompatible with the values and culture of the Royal Canadian Navy. The chain of command will not hesitate to act and, if necessary, remove from our ranks those who are unwilling to conduct themselves professionally. The Royal Canadian Navy has an obligation to ensure an ethical, respectful, professional environment for all of its members and reflect that commitment in our interactions with those outside the RCN, the Royal Canadian Navy. Operationally, our continued success depends on an unwavering trust and cohesion among members based on strong morals and integrity, regardless of circumstance, disgusting. ethnicity, gender, background or persuasion. There will be an investigation into this matter. A fair and unbiased investigation into allegations of wrongdoing is fundamental to our system of justice and concept of democracy. While we understand the public's interest in the matter, we must always ensure the integrity of any investigation protects the complainants and safeguards due process. Although we did not name the individual directly to the media relations line, it appears that they are already aware of this situation. But will Jessica Silva be able to hide these perverted comments behind some sort of arbitrary gender orientation <laughs> designation? under the gender inclusivity policies of the Canadian Armed Forces, as the force increasingly struggles to recruit members, a move that has compromised operational readiness, leaving Canada's military short on trained, effective members. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. Yeah, thanks, uh, Rebel News, for that great story. Thank you, uh, Ms. Tamara Ugolini, for that story, too. Now, I know... A couple of people 
that were kicked out of the service because of their stance on the jibby jabs and their stance on the whole mandates in regards to hurting people like cattle. And yet you've got a piece of shit like that master seaman sitting there explaining this, this garbage to people. Now I will reiterate, ladies and gentlemen, I do not care what your sexuality is. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care who you love because the majority of people just don't really care what you put in your mouth, what you put in your face, where you put this, that, horizontal Olympic shuffle, no one cares, okay? But when you have an individual that promotes this kind of garbage, okay? And yes, I, I do believe in free speech. Freedom of expression is key, freedom of thought. What's this individual promoting, though? Oh, it's okay, because kids can consent. Well, if they can consent to that activity, then they'd be able to vote and pay taxes like the rest of us, right? Right? Were they not? Or is that just a trend? Just a faith? Because, you know, it's, it's just not real. Yeah, kiss my royal ass. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And welcome back to the episode, ladies and gentlemen. My apologies for the uh, the passion. The passion I have for... For, for, for trying to be a decent guy, for trying to be a decent human being and trying to be humane with people. But when you have an individual that would literally promote and advocate that kind of behavior in the name of the queer community. Now, I remember 25 years ago, if you said queer, it was a bad word. It was like dropping an F word or a D word or something derogatory to the words, towards the homosexual community. So you just didn't do it. But now it's okay. Now it's okay to promote this kind of behavior. That's all right. Oh, children can consent. No, they can't. That's the problem. They cannot consent. Right? When you're manipulated and forced into doing something like Billy, you do those dishes. Okay. Billy, you clean your room. Okay. Billy, you do this. Okay. Is that is that is that good skills? Are those good skills? Are those good positive things to teach children? Like, are we really turning into this, this dystopic garbage because a handful of people might get their feelings hurt? Well, I like to herd a handful of those people into a room. Okay? Especially ones that admit to getting their jollies out of that kind of behavior with little kids. And I'd like to walk in that room with a baseball bat. You know what I mean? Something to think about. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 212 of my Tuesday rant. RCN Sailor Defends Maps and Carbon Tax Part 2. So I won't dwell anymore into that maps uh, mofo. <clears throat> uh, pardon my French, but that stupid bitch has got no respect front of me. And like I said, if she was in my chain of command, I would gladly, gladly like to see her suffer administratively. And I'd kick her ass out. I would. I don't give a fuck about this inclusivity garbage because you're not being inclusive by promoting that kind of stuff. You're being perversive and, and mean and nasty. And no. Sorry, that's just where I stand, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't like in what I say, you can always write me an email. You've got my information there in the description. How to contact me, please send me your thoughts or send me a comment once you see this video. Anyway, carrying on with uh, episode 212, the Carbon Tax Part 2. Now, effective this 1st of July, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We get an up. That's right. Another up on the carbon tax, too. Right? Roughly another 10 to 12 cents per liter of gasoline. Maybe another 10 to $12 more for heat and hydro. And, of course, with a new carbon tax, grocery is going to go up again, gas is going up again, and life as we see it is going to go up again. All because these so-called climate weirdos, and I will call them climate weirdos, and our beloved Prime Minister and his bunch of commie cabaret, uh, sitting there discussing the fact how we're going to save the environment by taking more money out of your pocket. Well, now, I've engaged some Twitters, um, we'll, we'll call them twits who like to remind me about my privilege and remind me that the fact that my skin is white and I'm a male and then I'm a fifth straight white male. Oh, my goodness. Heaven forbid. Oh, oh. Anyhow, I'll make a long story short. I, I, I tuned a lot of these people in 
We all know that taxes aren't going to change the weather or save the world because how many innovations, ladies and gentlemen, have we seen in the past five years that are going to save the planet from the climate emergency? Wind? Solar? Really? How? I guess you haven't spent time uh, in Canada during the winter months where there isn't too much sun and there's not that much wind unless you get a snowstorm or a snow squall or whiteouts or a fucking blizzard. Other than that, though, you don't get enough wind to grind these turbines, create enough electricity to keep a small town operating. Now, maybe a small homestead or a small house. I've seen people uh, try to contain the wind for their own uses, for electricity, and some have been successful and some haven't. But they've also used other things, too. They've combined solar and wind and, believe it or not, diesel fuel. So they have the best of three to get that on the go, ladies and gentlemen. But, of course, you know, the government wouldn't let us innovate and do things on our own. No, because they would not get a piece of the pie if it came to that. So, carbon tax is a scam, part two. And I think there's also rumblings of, a, <laughs> of adding GST to that as well, too. So, an additional 5% to make sure that your tax is going to the right places. Basically, the Canadian government to pay off their debt. So, you're not saving the world. And considering that Canada, even though our population has gone up to 40 million people now, as I think last of week, um, <laughs> we're still, our, our carbon footprint is minimal compared to our, our dear friends in China and in India. So why are people still buying into this garbage? Why is the majority of the progressive voter base in La Belle Provence and in Ontario still buying this garbage? Right? And where's the prime minister? Well, I know parliament has recessed for summer because they got to have their nine weeks of holidays, even though they had six weeks of holidays at Christmas, right? So they got to have their 14 weeks of holidays throughout the year. Well, people like you, me, my wife, our friends, their friends, those friends are working around the clock to pay our taxes off to keep things afloat so we don't have to end up going to the food bank once a month. That's self-explanatory, ladies and gentlemen, where the priorities are with these leaders, these people that are supposed to protect us, protect our interests to make us feel really, really good, said no one. All right? So <clears throat> the thing is, is that we don't have a choice. We still got to pay it. So when we go to the pumps and then pay our electricity bills, any utility bill, okay, we're constantly going to be reminded how much we owe, right? Funny thing, the other day, uh, I, I, I've told you all about my tax problems that have been going on here. What I have to owe the IRA, uh, IRA, them, I'm thinking like an American, what I have to owe the CRA, you know, Canada Revenue Agency, because I have our best interests at heart, even though they fail to look after the $15 billion in diligence, or it, it, basically they fucked up and they refuse to reclaim it because they've given money to dead people and teenagers and employed people and prisoners in the name of the pandemic to keep people safe and secure, right? And they had their strike there a couple of months back because they want the right to do Zoom meetings and do work in their jammy jams while the rest of us are out hauling shit and clay and uh, other things to keep food in our table. Priorities too, right? So they refuse to uh, look into the $15 billion of derelict payments, uh, $15 billion correction in derelict payments, and they refuse to do their part. And yet, up the ante again when it comes to carbon taxes. So I got to spend another 10 bucks maybe on gas. Maybe another $6 because our province here, they're cutting away their share of the provincial tax. So in a way, we're getting a favor. But needless to say, I'm thinking of the rest of the country too. I'm thinking about my family and friends back in Ontario that are getting up the, up the chuff for the sake of the climate emergency, right? And when we talk about those forest fires that are still raging, they've been finding arsonists, ladies and gentlemen. More to follow on that too. Look to your local news for uh, some of that uh, juicy tidbits as well. So to all my Twitter fans out there that like to challenge the fifth white male on my stance in the environment, I'd like to remind you that I'm almost half a century years of age. And I've seen a lot and I've done a lot. And I remember winters as a kid where they weren't so cold and they were kind of mild. And I also remember summers when I was a kid. They were really effing hot and miserable. I also remember one April, too, where it got so warm, we thought it was July because of 
It was just the way the weather was. But I don't remember anyone panicking, saying it was a climate emergency. It was kind of a freak anomaly. But still, it happened. But nobody panicked. So those individuals that are clenching their perils and holding on to their hands and their dickies, hoping there's salvation with giving away more of our money, guess again, it's not going to happen. It's shit like this that keeps fueling people's fire, ladies and gentlemen. It's the buffoonery that's been brought to us this month with the worry of inclusion. But you're not including logic and you're not including decency. There's lots of gay people in my life that I respect that I'll gladly call friend. There's lots of straight people in my life that I respect that I'll gladly call friend. And I'm their friend and they're my friend because we respect each other and they don't treat people like garbage. And they definitely don't want to use kids as fodder or as an excuse for anything. They're better than that. I suggest my audience out there and my wonderful audience, you know, all you wonderful people, start using people as people. Start treating people like people. I don't mean use people. Sorry. I'm just so fucking fed up with this garbage. Start treating people like people. Leave kids alone. Let them grow. I've said this before. If little Billy hits puberty and he looks at his friend Scotty in a different light, well, I guess we got news for Billy and Scotty. Okay. Or if Billy hits puberty and uh, he's looking at Sarah in a different light, and we got news for Billy and Sarah. Let kids be. Do not try to justify buffoonery and do not try to justify and validate a crime. Because there's also people in my life that were hurt as children by people they trusted. One was died, done by a step parent. The other one was done by a teacher. Go figure. Something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. And I highly encourage the people who have suffered through that trauma, get out there and tell these individuals where to go and what not to do with these kids. Start treating kids like kids. Let them explore things on their terms. Let them discover things on their terms, not yours or what you think is best there, Mr. State or Mr. Teachers Union, or Miss, or however you identify, right? Because this stuff, these little steps that are taking, will take another foot, will take another inch. You're going to get a backlash, and it's not going to be pretty. There's going to be some parent or guardian out there who's going to have enough of this garbage, and then what? I hate to say it, but... Uh, the outcome will more or less be a violent one. And uh, can't sit there and say, I didn't tell you so. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful Tuesday, 27th of June, 2023. Regardless of <laughs> my innuendos and what I've been saying in this episode, I wish nothing but good things for all of you out there. And I'll say again, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, share this content all over your social media platform, all over YouTube, all over Rumble. And once again, thank you to my new Rumblers. I've got a few more subscribers out there. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Keep sharing my content in Rumble too. And if you'd like to donate, ladies and gentlemen, please consider donating. I could use the extra funds. Uh, links on how to and where to donate will be in my description. Give what you can. I'm not going to sit and demand cash all the time, but every little bit helps too, ladies and gentlemen, if you can. And uh, I appreciate your patronage deeply. And a special shout out there, too, to the people at Northern Perspective. They got a live stream coming up. <coughs> I'll leave links uh, to their podcast or their video series on YouTube. A uh, great couple out of Ontario, good people. And just very, very realistic. Uh, we disagree on certain values, but they're more conservative. I'm more libertarian. But we see eye to eye when it comes to common sense and politics in this great country we call Canada. And anyway, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 27th of June, 2023. You know, hold on for dear life come this Saturday when the carbon tax goes up again. So if you have the chance, go get some extra gasoline, put a few extra bucks aside um, for the next utility bill month. Ours comes, I think, on the 20th. So I'll put a few more bucks aside again to pay that thing. Um, but do what you can, help each other out, you know. Weather is nice, so spend some time outside with your family and friends. Get out and breathe. Do what you can. And do what you can to help each other out in these trying times. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I'll probably see you next week. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart.
Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck podcast. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy. <laughs>